Hello friends, this video on Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about SN2 reaction now. Let's see the concept of SN2 reaction. So there is a, a leaving group, I mean there's a compound here, the leaving group here and there's a very strong nucleophile here. This, this, this is a very strong nucleophile. This nucleophile can influence this atom to move, right? So this nucleophile we see can influence this atom to move and this atom will have to move. So in this case, the influence of this atom matters. Also, if you see there are no security guards here, right? So no security guard. So had there been security guard, this lady would, ha would, would, would not have been able to influence this atom to go, right? So there is no security guard. There is a strong nucleophile. This lady was strong. So these things favors SN2 reaction. So I have someone who is very strong. It comes, it influences, kicks the person out. That is SN2 reaction. Why it is SN2 reaction? Because it is bimolar. So the rate determining factor is based on both two, right? Both the uh, strength of these two decides what is the rate. Correct? The rate depends also on the reactant and the nucleophile. So if you see this is the typical example of SN2 reaction. So this was a reactant and this is my nucleophile. Nucleophile is strong, it came and attacked this guy from this side. So if you see, there was no security guard, no security hindrance. Now since this is attacked, this is a weak guy, this is a weak guy, it left. So see the reaction is one step actually, it's all things happen in one step. But the rate of the reaction depends on two people, right? So it is SN2 reaction. This is the concept, let's see the reaction actually, right? So in this case, a lone pair of nucleophile attacks the carbon, electrophilic carbon from the back side. Please note back side is critical here. Always the attack is from the back side, right? And this expel another group. This is a leaving group. So this nucleophile will attack this carbon, this is carbon from the back side and will expel the leaving group. The blue one is the leaving group. Right, and this is one step. This is one step, and thus, since the attack is from the back side, it causes inversion. We'll talk about inversion in the next few slides because, see, if you see this OH minus here, and this here, if you see only one methyl group and two hydrogen, so the space is there for this OH minus to attack. Right, the security guard is less, only one security guard actually. So it can attack. Now, there's a transition stage that happens, right. And then this OH minus is linked and BR minus is kicked out. This is one step, all one step. But SN2, why SN2? Because the slowest step, this is my slowest step, right? This is my slowest step. It involves two things, right? This involves two species. One is the reactant and one is the reagent. So it is called SN2, it is bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. Correct. And experimentally it has been seen that the rate of reaction depends both on the reactant products. So what they have done is they have increased the reactants and they have seen the rate of reaction increase. They have increased the product, sorry, they have increased the nucleophile, they have seen the rate of reaction increase. They have increased both and they have seen the rate of reaction increase. So that means the rate of reaction depends both on my reactants and the nucleophile. Correct? It is attacked from back. So there is something called inversion because it is attacking, attacking from back and we will discuss more about inversion in the next two slides. Let's understand more about uh, this reaction. So a protic solvent favors this. Why? Because ha if this is a protic solvent, protic solvent will do what? If there is a halogen X, if there is a halogen X, Let's suppose here, right? So this, since this is a protic solvent, protic solvent will try to attract this halogen and will try to say this, uh, ask this halogen to leave on its own, and then it will become SN1 reaction because if this halogen leaves on its own and then some other nucleophile is attacking, this becomes SN1 reaction. But we don't want that. We want someone to attack from back for SN2 reaction. So in this case, 
if it is a protic solvent it is better so in that case there is no what you call interference or there is no disturbance of for these halogen to leave there is no uh, extra reason or extra affinity of these halogen to leave this particular react correct in this case there is no intermediate form in sn1 we have seen the carbocation is formed in this case there is no intermediate form is all one step process all one step process right and in this case both substrate and attacking agent they decide the rate of reaction that's why it's called sn2 because there are two species that decides the rate of the reaction in this case a strong nucleophile is attacked because i'm saying that the nucleophile is attacking right so this means the nucleophile should be strong enough to attack to kick this leaving group out so if the nucleophile is strong it is added advantage inversion of control takes place as i told i'll explain what is inversion of control in the next few slides presence of bulky group near the carbon atom has inhibiting effect for example i have this carbon and i have three bulky group here so in this case a nucleophile will not be able to attack so the bulky if there is a bulky group on this carbon the nucleophile won't be able to attack right so it is good that the carbon is 1 degree or at the max 2 degree right so bulky group is not advisable so that's why if you see the primary halides are more reactive because in primary halide there is no bulky group secondary halide there is some bulky group tertiary halide there are more bulky groups right so primary halides are more prone to sn2 reaction so the reactivity of halides as i told ri br cl f here also better the living group better it is here also in both the reactions actually this is common actually so ri is the best living group so better the living group that's why it is easy for this uh, halogen to go out right so if i have a ri here it can easily be kicked out even with the with a weak weak nucleophile so the better the living group the better it is so it is common for both so you can ignore this when you want to compare sn1 and sn2 reaction but this plays a critical role right the uh, reactivity or better living group now let's understand the factors affecting sn1 and sn2 let's compare these two reactions so observation is in sn1 we have seen the nucleophile strength is not important because nucleophile doesn't play any role but in sn2 the nucleophile strength plays a critical role both sn1 and sn2 requires a good living group that is something we have seen in sn1 it is okay to have a steric hindrance because it is the halogen that decides it has to leave or not right the nucleophile just comes and places uh, take that place right there is no attack as such so the steric hindrance doesn't make a difference it is good to have a steric hindrance actually why with the steric hindrance um, the carbocation form is generally more stable but in sn2 if there is a steric hindrance it is very difficult to have sn2 reaction because it happens from the back side there has to be space for attack protic solvent as i told favors sn1 reaction why the protic solvent um, encourages x here right to leave to leave this compound and form hx so if there is a protic solvent x h plus it encourages x to leave so protic solvent favors sn1 reaction but a protic solvent favors sn2 reaction right and since sn2 reaction proceeds from the back side as i told it is happening from the back side from the back side so if there is a stereo center present we get inversion the the product is inversion so we'll get the mixture of but for sn1 reaction we'll get the mixture of retention and inversion we'll talk about these things also later just understand the concept see if it is sn2 reaction what is happening is i have let's suppose x sorry let's suppose h h h and probably let's suppose this is a this is b this is c small 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 and i have x i have attack from here of some nucleophile so what i get here is if you see the intermediate will be c b and a all one plane then i have a nucleophile and then i have x and further the x will go off so i'll get something like this nucleophile and then i'll get c a and b so if you see this inversion now earlier it's sorry it was a b and c you see the inversion happened right so it was a b and c in this direction it became a b and c in this direction 
So the inversion happened. So nucleophile attack and nucleotide droid. This is A, this is B, and this is C. So since this attack, this became a planar one for for a moment moment, and then since the nucleophile attack from this side, this became inversion because if you see the thing, it changed. It was A B C in this direction become C B A. We'll we'll learn more about stereochemistry in the next few slides, and you'll understand this better actually. So there is an inversion of control. Just understand in case of SN two reaction. But in case of SN one reaction, if you see the same thing, let's suppose it goes for SN one reaction. So the intermediate form will be C, and then it will be all plane actually. It will be all in one plane. C A B. Correct. Or since the carbon is already there, let me put it D. Correct. It will be a carbocation. You see. Now the nucleophile can attack from this side or from this side, both side. So in this case, you will get the mixture of retention and inversion, right? Because I'm not able to show you in this picture actually. This is let's suppose carbon, and this A B T. So this, if it attacks from this side, it will form something like this. Let's suppose there is a nucleophile N, so it will form C. A B D and N, correct. And if it attacks from this side, it will form N A B and D. And both are actually, if you see, different actually. Both are optical isomers, right? Stereomers actually we call. We have learned this in class eleven. So in that case, we get both fifty-fifty. So we get the mixture of retention and inversion. This is called uh, inversion because it attacks from back side. And this is called retention because the attack is from the front side. But in case of SN2 reaction, since the attack is only from back side, we all only get inversion. Understood? So in case of SN1, the attack is from both sides because when the carbocation is formed, the attack can be from any side, right? So it gives inversion, retention both. But in case of SN2, the attack is only from back side, so you always get inversion. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.